Hello my friends and welcome to Time Between Times Storytelling with me, Owen Staten. The wheel of the year fastly turns and summer is now with us. But the time of tales is eternal and now we are ready for another one. But before we start, let me just thank you. Next week I will be recording my 100th video. A hundred videos, mostly with me sat in this chair talking to you across the ether. <laughs> I never thought it would go this far. This Wednesday, the 15th of June, if you're listening to this as it goes live, at 7.30pm British time, I will be performing a live story tell. So please join me where we can chat, we can ask questions, and I am asking everyone to submit their top three favourite tales from the last hundred. And I will tell those tales for you this Wednesday. Dioch o galon, my friends. Thank you very much for supporting me through this long endeavour. And I will be taking a short break, so there probably won't be another tale until the end of July, around then, when we will start again with another cycle of traditional tales told by me. So, here we are. Today I have a special tale for you. There are no ghosts, there are no monsters, there are no Talwith Teg, spoilers, but there are some exceptional characters in a famous tale. The tale of the maid of Kevn Adfa. Sit back, my friends. Relax. Let the time between times wash over you. The time when it's neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. The time when the veil between our world and the fairy world is wafer, wafer thin. So thin that for a few moments you can reach into their realm. And for a few moments they can reach into ours. Now is the time that people see ghosts. Now is the time that people see lights in the sky. Now is the time between times, so gather around the fire pit. Far away you can hear the howl of wolves, you can hear the growl of bears, but you know that you are safe here at the time between times. So come with me, my friends, back to the year 1704, to Llan the near my steg, a beautiful village nestled in the hills, so pretty that people come from miles around to visit the churchyard, for there are buried two exceptional people. Anne Thomas was a rich young girl, born in 1704. She lived in a mansion at Kevnadva. Sadly, her father died when she was but a young girl, and she was promised to marry. The son of the family solicitor, whose name was Anthony Maddox. Throughout her life, Anne was a dreamer, often looking out of her window, singing songs. She was friendly with her maid, her servant, and they would walk the fields and the pastures around beautiful Llanganwyd, telling tales, telling their dreams, telling their hopes. Anne was unhappy with her marriage match, but she knew that her family wanted her to go through with it. So she carried on as normal, knowing that one day she would marry Maddox, and they would be Lord and Lady of Kevnadva. But in 1722, something happened that would change all of that. One day, Anne was laying on her bed when she heard the sweet song of singing outside her window. She looked outside, and there, on the roof of one of the barns outside, she saw a young man thatching. He had long, dark, wavy hair, he sang with a song and a voice of an angel. She listened to him for what seemed like hours before summoning enough courage to walk across the yard. She stood at the bottom of the ladder and called up to him. He looked down and their eyes locked. And at that moment, she fell in love. His name was Will Hopkin. He was a poor man from a local farm who did small jobs around the village just to keep the wolves from his door. But him and Anne were soulmates. They knew the same tales, they sang the same songs, they performed the same poems, and everything they spoke of was like they were speaking to themselves. 
never had two people ever been so close. A week after they first met, they stole their first kiss. And after that, they would meet in secret, sharing stories and just being in each other's company. Will knew that Anne was due to marry Maddox, but hoped that somewhere, somehow, something would happen that would change that. In order to keep things secret, Anne confided in her servant of what had happened and arranged their meetings through placing a letter in a small cleft in the trunk of a sycamore tree near the village. The servant would take the letter and place it in the hole, and then Will would go there, taking the letter himself, reading often a poem or a song or a prayer that Anne had written, and adding one of his own backwards. This went on for a long time, till one dark day. Anne's mother had grown suspicious and stopped the servant as she was leaving. When she saw what Anne had written on the letter that she had found upon the servant, her anger knew no bounds. She immediately ordered the marriage of Maddox and Anne in order to stop this love affair straight away. Anne was distraught and she ran from the house, ran all the way to the sycamore. And there, having no paper to leave a note, she cut her hand and wrote a note in blood upon the leaf of a sycamore tree and placed it in the cleft. Then she ran back to her house. But sadly, fate, as it often does, overtook them. And that night there was a strong wind. And before Will could arrive at the tree, the leaf had blown away. So he never got to read it. Anne married Maddox. Will was distraught. He could not stay in the village, and as the church bells rang, he packed all his belongings and left. Travelling the land as an itinerant musician and poet, he wrote many songs, mostly about lost love and longing. He travelled from village to village, town to town, sleeping under road signs and small inns and stables for many years, till one day, by chance, Whilst near Bristol, in an inn, he saw a familiar face walk past him in the door. It was Anne's servant from all those years ago. Will looked up and spoke to her. She turned and looked at him. She said she had left their service because the house they lived in was a misery and Anne was dreadfully unhappy and she wished to know why Will never came to her when she left him the note. Will returned to Llanganwy, and there he found Anne, on the verge of death through a broken heart. The husband was nowhere to be seen. He stormed into the house in Kemnadba, ran up the stairs, and Anne died in his arms. On that day, long ago, she was buried in the churchyard, Llanganwy where a grave can still be seen today. Will carried on writing songs and poetry. Some of them are found to this day and are sung and still performed. But many of his poems are lost, although people say it was the work of a tortured genius. He is buried under the tree in the churchyard. Will Hopkin and Anne Thomas. An old, ancient, sad tale. The tale of the maid of Kemnadba. Something different for you today, but something worth telling. A traditional tale passed down through generations, and now I share it to you on this, the 99th episode of Time Between Times Storytelling. I hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed telling it. Thank you, my friends, for all your support. I am so grateful to each and every one of you. If you'd like to ask me a question, submit a tale for telling, or just say how much you enjoy or don't enjoy the tales, write to me at owenstaten at aol.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Owen S. Griffiths. And if you're feeling really generous, with the 100th episode coming up, you can buy me a coffee at ko forward slash owenstaten. 
Diolch O'Gallon, my friends. Please join me on Wednesday, unless it's in the past. But then you could always write to me, I suppose. And I will see you soon. Diolch Thank you very much. No staff.